hypnotized What's up is down, what's left is right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end, but we'll see it through I can't hear you. Oh, you're... Are you muted? Can you hear me? Are you muted? It looks like Okay. Did you put in the chat? So then I've unmuted. Yeah, that. I can but hear can you, you now. Can you hear me twice? You can't hear me twice. No, I only hear you one time. Perfect. Right. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. It's like so, it's so weird doing this with my phone now. I can't. <laughs> I can't work out. Sort of. Every time I stream, it seems to go a bit different now. So. Uh, I, yeah, I'm that's so okay. <laughs> it's okay. Right, wonderful. Well, welcome. We'll start start that over. Um, how are you? I'm doing okay. I'm losing Good my voice you. a little bit. I've got a little oh, bit no. of cold. Oh, so, rubbish. but I'm excited about today's topic. So it'll be Me fun. Too. Like <laughs> your research is really, really good. I was going through uh, sorting out the slides. Early. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm really really excited about it. Um, I hope I've put them in the the right order and everything. Cameras no worries. Well, um, we'll just look at like them. The right text and all that. So yeah, there we go. My my camera is also a bit heavy for my for my stand. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're lying yeah. around that. Yeah, literally. <laughs> let, let me know if, if I'm falling. Okay. Um, perfect. Right. So, um, do you want to start? Do you want me to bring up the slides first? Oh no. What I'll do is I'll just say. Well, we'll just start. Um, today. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Today we we want to talk about um, ballistic materials or fabrics, right? So, um, we had started talking about a fabric called Kevlar, which Kevlar yeah, I, is a I, ballistic sorry, material. I, mm -hmm. I called the stream Kevlar because I thought people would probably recognize that more. Yes. Um, yeah. And they probably would. Be, but Kevlar is actually a trademarked, um, a trademark product by DuPont Company, right? And uh, Kevlar came about. Um, it's very interesting. I always thought it was very, very interesting because when I was in college, I hung out with engineers all the time. And um, I had a, a friend who was a ceramics engineer and um, he was working on ballistic uh, materials in ceramics. Um, and so when we started looking at Kevlar in my textiles and apparel class, I was like, wow, this is really interesting because it has a lot of the same properties that the, you know, the ceramics are used for, you know, high heat resistance. Um, you know, it can, it can be used underwater. It's not corrosive. Things like that that are very, very, very good for for this material. But it's a fabric, right? So, which is an, amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, we'll just start. Like I said, uh, uh, we're discussing we're discussing what are called soft ballistic materials. Um, and I thought we could talk about this because we've seen recently in recent streams on YouTube and stuff that there's been some interaction with the police <laughs> and also yes, I thought this is extremely timely. Like, how yes, you I know. <laughs> I know. And also, you know, they uh, the interaction with the police, you saw some probably some ballistic uh, materials there. They were either <clears throat> hard or soft. Right. So they could have been plated armor or um, you know other pieces of armor, or even just some of the vests or the materials that they were using, possibly were ballistic materials, right? To stop, um, to stop cut injury. A ballistic yeah, yeah, material, it could be like multiple layers of that fabric. Yes, yeah, and ballistic material is, um, and that is what it's what it's used for, right? They they started using ballistic. Uh, uh, ballistic material back with um, knights, right? So body armor has been <laughs> has been in use for a long time. So you can put up the knight, the the suit of armor type of thing, it's right? All in one thing. So we will we will yeah. scroll through to that one. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I put, oh, I put no, them in no, wrong no, order. No. It's just uh, yeah, it's sort of the easiest way to make the upload. It was just one thing. Right, wonderful. Thank. You. Yeah, so, a little close up. Uh, yeah, so this is a knight, uh, a knight's suit of armor, right? So this would have been a piece of body armor that was made for somebody back in, you know, the uh, the Middle Ages, probably in the 1300s or or some sort, right? So we've been trying to protect our bodies from ballistic materials, whether that's shrapnel or bullets or uh, you know, spears and arrows and things like that, right? Um, so we've been doing these things for for a long time. You know, uh, armor is, is very unique because it's customized to an individual person. Um, so that's what makes I think that this this old method of armoring was very very customized to the way that the person was shaped through the shoulders, the torso, you know, it wasn't like you could take a suit of armor and interchange it between, you know, two different uh, people if they didn't match the same physical characteristics, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, and we're talking about um, ballistic materials that are soft um, because these are fabrics, right? So obviously this body armor is not soft. Um, it's not going to be pliable at all. And in fact, if it breaks, um, it might actually cut you in the process as well, right? It's not, uh, it's a brittle sort of armor that is not um, very giving and it's not very, um, uh, it, it could actually, it, you, you don't want armor that in turn injures you, you when it's in use, right? So, um. So back in the 60s, you know, you know, when all the stuff was happening, there was there was a movie back in the day. There was an old movie called The Graduate. And um, and Dustin Hoffman was in this movie. And there's a scene where Dustin Hoffman is he's a recent graduate and he's at a uh, at a party and it's kind of boring. He's it's his friends, his uh, parents party and stuff. And one of his friend's parents asks him, um, you know, what's the, what's the future like? What's the future hold? And, and he says plastics, right? Um, well, here we are. This is the world of plastics that they were talking about in that movie, right? So, so in 1965, Stephanie Kowalik, um, who was the chemist, um, she was a chemist at the DuPont company, and she was working with things that are called um, aromatic polymides. Now, these are petroleum products, right? So these chemicals and these synthesis agents that DuPont is working with, these are coming from, um, from petroleum products, right? So we have to keep that 
in mind when we're talking about these products that are very, very high strength um, and high, um, you know, have high, high value for um, keeping us safe. Um, you know, because there's some good uses for, for petroleum, right? <laughs> and there's some bad uses for it as well. And it does pollute, right? And it's a, it's a, uh, it is a, it's, it's a quantity that can run out. So, um, so Stephanie, uh, Kowaliak was, was a chemist at DuPont and she was working there. She worked there for like 40 years. Um, and Stephanie was working with aromatic, aromatic, uh, polymers and she synthesized a polymer in 1965 that looked interesting. It was, it didn't behave the way it should have behaved. And that's what interested her. It, uh, wasn't, uh, usually these polymers are in a liquid and they flow kind of like syrup. They're, they're very viscous and heavy, but this one like flowed really, really pretty quickly. Um, and it had a different color or different uh, opaqueness or op opal quality to it. So she and another worker at DuPont de decided, well, let's take a look at this. Let's put it in a spinneret, right? So, so what they do with this is, is that's the way that these uh, polymers are then synthesized into um, a yarn or a fiber, right, is, is through a spinneret. And a spinneret will take that polymer and then kind of extrude it through a spinneret system so that it makes uh, very, very long, thin fibers. Um, she and the spinneret operator, I'm sorry. Do you want oh, yeah. me to put up the slide for that one? Oh, yeah, we can put up the spinneret so slides. I forgot I had one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So here you can see this is just a very basic spinneret. The spinneret is at the top, and you can see the spinneret is, is uh, just producing filaments, right? Just filaments of uh, fiber out of it, like a drum-like head. Um, and it's doing this by extrusion, right? There's holes in the surface of the spinneret and those polymers are extruded out through there. Now, hopefully the spinneret does a little bit of alignment of those polymers as well, like to kind of line those polymers up into what would then become a fiber and then a yarn, right? With twist, okay? So then the spinneret will spin those um, fibers around um, and it does some like cooling baths in water and you know UV protection and stuff. And then it goes onto a bolt. Now, Stephanie and her coworker at DuPont did this with this new polymer. And after that just one-off test, they found that that filament of what was then to become Kevlar was five times stronger than steel wow. in its strength. So those little filaments were just uh, just off the bat without any sort of additional, you know, looking at the chemistry or looking to see if there were different ways that maybe the spinneret could be operated so that it's a better fiber, you know, things like that. Without any of that sort of experimentation, they had the strength of that and they knew that it was higher than, than steel right off the bat, right? So what does that mean? It means that, you know, the, the fabric itself can, can provide as much protection, in fact, five times the protection that a, a similar piece of steel could. Now, that's pretty impressive, right? Um, especially because if you remember the, um, the body armor of old was basically a piece of steel, right? Or a piece of, of metal, you know, just around your body. And so now we have this fabric, it's soft, it's pliable, it can be woven, you know, um, and things like that. And, and, and so off to the races they went um, with Stephanie was, um, was very happy to see this. They were extremely happy that they had, taken the time to do that, um, that, that, uh, different thing. And, and here she is, that's a picture of Stephanie right there. Um, 
And she also helped produce other things like spandex, of all things. <laughs> so Stephanie helps us uh, protect police officers and military. And then she also helps us with our yoga pants. So which is, that's nice. <laughs> right. Anyway, so um, over the next six years, they continued the development of Kevlar you know, into, um, into a product, into an actual product. And, um, you know, of course, they had to do lots of research and experimentation in, you know, the fineness of the denier of the, the, the fiber, right? How, what is the, the, the thickness of that um, actual fiber? How thick does it need to be? Or does it make any difference, right? And, you know, how does it twist well? Does it fray? Does it do all of these things? Um, so they they were they started producing at uh, this, and essentially these are synthetic fibers. They were they're developed and and um, you know, they're developed with polymer chemistry. They're synthetic. They're fully synthetic, and um, it was patented. And then it, they started selling Kevlar to consumers. Um, I think in nineteen in the nineteen seventies, in the early nineteen seventies. So Kevlar now, um, I think if, if we can look at the molecule chain, we won't look at the chemistry for very long, but it is interesting how it's very Lego. You can almost see it. Yeah, see the, yeah, the, the single chain is a good one. Yeah, so this is a single chain. You can see where the, um, the red, uh, there's red atoms and then there's little uh, blue balls. This is like a, I think this is called a 3D ball, ball chart for this. You can see that there's very, very um, strong, see these O rings, right? These big rings, um, very, very strong. And then you have these little red balls that are hydrogen. And when those bind, they're very, very strong hydrogen bonds, right? So just the molecule has a very linear you know, uh, a linear uh, shape with that built-in circular in it that makes it even stronger, right? So it's got that linearity with that, the circles providing this strongness, like an arch would pr provide strength, right? Yeah. And then those red dots are hydrogen bonds, which would, which are extremely tight bonds. So when these Kevlar uh, molecules bind together, they are together. <laughs> like it, you mm -hmm. cannot keep them, you can't get them. It's very hard to unbind them. Yeah. Uh, so that means that this is a super, super stable product. Um, it's uh, hard to cut through. And, and that does present some problems, right? So especially when you want to, want to use a fabric, <laughs> right? To, to cut, you have to really know, you have to have a good cutting table, first of all. And um, and it does have to be just very, you know, blade, it's blade-like precision where they just right. pretty much take multiple layers of Kevlar fabric, you know, and then just stamp them into shapes, you know, because of the yeah. cutting process. Yeah. There was actually one yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see that, right? That's a sheet of Kevlar. Mm, it's so thick. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, so Kevlar is, is a fabric, and um, people think of bulletproof vests and things like that, but, you know, it can also be used for brake pads. You know, it's extremely durable, wow. right? Or things that would have lots of, like, heat or abrasiveness, that, that needed to be withstood. Kevlar is very good for that. Very good. Um, but it's also good to be woven. So when you do work with Kevlar, you, you of course have to have special um, tools to work with the fabric, but there are actually um, clothing companies out there that make cl uh, Kevlar clothing. Mm. So, um, and I think that's really, really interesting. But there, there's definitely uh, people out there that make it. Uh, yeah, very good. 
and May has just put uh, no need for stitches, fabric yeah. glue. How um, sort of do you know kind of what they use to sort of like bind pieces together? Yeah, the binding is usually some sort of melting process. Um, the melting temperature of Kevlar is very, very, very high, but it won't melt. It'll just um, distort. And then I don't think that Kevlar actually starts burning until some, it's a ridiculously high, um, like 500 degrees cel uh, uh, Celsius is wow. when it will actually start to burn, which is really, really high. Yeah. So, so of course, you know, you can, you can, you know, Kevlar is made for maybe um, fireman's clothing, right? Um, very good, yeah. Things like that, yeah. I it's also, also I very I light. Um, so oh, compared to right, steel, yeah. it's very, very lightweight. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking, I suppose, sort of like when you see like a, like a bulletproof vest or a bulletproof vest, yes. they kind of, uh, you know, like they have it in this sort of vest. And I suppose it's actually it's like a layer in between. Yes. Because, yeah. yeah. It can I'm be. I'm just thinking of sort of like times when you kind of like maybe see sort of like someone that's being sort of stabbed or something like in the films and and it does actually sort of break apart but that would be the outside fabric right rather than actually this being yeah so I suppose you don't really uh need to sort of um mold it together necessarily because it will be in between the of the fabric mm -hmm. yeah now you know they do use Kevlar thread to, oh. to sew Kevlar. And they also use um, Kevlar for things like uh, sails, you know, very large surface area of fabric that has to have a lot of strength. Um, now, what they have found about Kevlar, which is kind of unfortunate, mm -hmm. is that once it's stressed, it will break apart very, very easily. So what they've found is for people who use Kevlar ropes, perhaps on big ships and things like that, um, that if there's some sort of stress on that rope, let's say a fire or something, they have to throw that rope away. It'll probably break the next time it's, wow. it's used. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's the story of Kevlar. I'm trying to think if there was anything else pointed to. Uh, well, do you want me, because uh, we've got this one of oh, yeah. the molecules, mm -hmm. so is this kind of more when it's um, the fabric? Yes, so you can see how it, it will align itself, you know, those each one of those little bars of um, is is one polymer, so they would all lock to each to each other stacked, but then they would also lock to each other in this star oh, configuration yeah. as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And it, be, it, it becomes extremely, very, very stable, right? Because it's a, a crystalline type of structure. It's very I strong. I say, yeah, that's like probably where it gets its strength from. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it has a very good high strength to, to weight ratio. It uh, oh, yeah. doesn't resist breaking um oh yeah this one is interesting too yeah this one is um so they can they can take these polymers and do different the polymer doesn't um become kevlar until the melting process and the spinning process and then it becomes kevlar right um, before that, it's just a polymer and it doesn't have the um, the properties attached to it. And here you can see the first one is with melt spinning, which is very simply, you know, melting polymer onto a hot spinneret that spins, that just basically melts it out through the, um, through the holes within the spinneret while cool air is being jetted up, right? And then you can see... Um, it's, it might not seem like those things are needed, but those little um, wheels that are pulling the fiber every which direction as it comes through before it goes on the wheel, those are very important too, because it's, 
those are responsible for aligning those polymers into the positions so that they line up and become that crystalline structure, right? Yeah. And then the the dry spinning is the same sort of thing. It, instead of it being melted, it's just dissolved into a concentrated sort of, it becomes sort of like a, you know, what would you call it? Um, a, so, a solvent. Um, and then the spinneret, um, and then there's an evaporating ca cabinet that would then evaporate away that solvent, oh, whatever the solvent God. was, right? Um, and then the the last one, the wet spinning is, to me, probably the most fascinating. I don't know how they figured out how to do the wet spinning, but um, dissolved polymer goes into a whole just uh, bucket of solvent, right? And through that process of the polymer being spun out through the spinneret inside the solvent, the, the molecules are made and formed and then uh, spun. So that's interesting too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've never seen that. So lots of crazy processes going into this, but each of these different types of spinning gives the, um, oh yeah, and even the nozzle yeah, exactly. on the spinneret itself can make a big wow. difference. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So this on the spinneret head, you know, if the spinneret looked like a shower head, say, right? The holes in the spinneret head would be the shape of, of these and the oh, shapes okay. of these like different sort of icing a cake. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. the different shapes of these polymer extrusions will provide you with different qualities, right? So wow. um, you can see the ones that are labeled with like a lavender are good for sportswear, for soft and dry touch, <laughs> things like that. So yeah. it's, really interesting how it's just the shape of how it's extruded that will provide a, a, a type of uh you know functionality to the fabric it's very interesting so and then also i think we have different types of kevlar oh yeah yeah we have the um I, you, you remember that Stephanie's original project was to look for um, polymers for tires, I believe, right? She was looking for radial tire um, uh, types of polymers, and she found the Kevlar instead. But Kevlar is used for, you know, the insides of those tires where, you know, they have the fabric, uh, they have, uh, so the, the tires can stretch and, and um, move and, and things like that. And then we also have just Kevlar yarn and then high stiffness uh, and medium stiffness yarns. And then um, you also have high elongation. So Kevlar does not stretch. It's not a very stretchy um, material. It will not elongate for very much before it snaps. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's not brittle, but it doesn't it does not have a good elongation stretch yeah. like spandex would have, right? Spandex mm, would be exactly. stretch. Yeah. yeah. And then they also have special processes for the high tenacity yarn, right? So if mm. they want the super, you know, they're looking more for the strength of the yarn instead of the, you know, instead of maybe the heat, uh, heat reflective properties, right? Um, then they'll they'll do more of a of of a a different type of yarn for strength instead. Yeah. So I think that's interesting. Um, that is, yeah, yeah. It's uh, probably sort of the different processes of maybe like how they create the the fibers probably lead to different. Yeah, yeah. What I think is strange is this: these are all um, synthetic fibers you know, and you can see how much research and time and effort gets put into uh, the process of finding the chemistry, right? And then the process of always, of, uh, you know, uh, finding the consumers, uh, you know, how the consumer would be best uh, 
helped with this fiber, right? Even the spinnerets and everything. But there's not a lot about, you know, the waste and stuff like that that actually happens with this type of processing. This is a very, very chemical heavy process. The chemicals that are used are not good chemicals. They're like sulfuric acid and, and things like that that are producing these reactions, these chemical yeah. polymer reactions. Now, I think that's fine. And I think it's great. You know, we have flame resistant clothing. I think that's important, you know, body armor and protective clothing and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think we we need to start getting to a place where we can look at the way that we use uh, fossil f fuels, especially, right? And say, yeah. oh, okay, well, here's this product, Kevlar, and it saves people's lives, right? So maybe we only use the fossil fuels for these things that save people's <laughs> lives that are very, very hard, yeah. you know, that don't have properties you can find anywhere else, right? Exactly. Or something like that. Yeah, like is there sort of something in the natural world that we could use instead? Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, yeah, sort of like it's not only the chemicals that are sort of used throughout the process, it's then like also like what's happening to these fabrics in their lives, you know? It's sort of yep. what's, uh, what's being done with that. Right. Yeah. Um, And I was just going to bring up... Um, Um, because there is a company that I know that uses um fire hoses, and they they then make bags out of them. Oh. Um, because I presume that fire hoses is um are made out of something you know like a Kevlar or something very similar because obviously yeah. they need to be fire resistant as well. Mm -hmm. Um. I uh, I didn't realize that they were using Kevlar for drum heads, of all things. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't have thought it either. Um, and also, I was going to bring up... Am I still there? Yeah. <laughs> from my other screen. Come on. Oh, no. I'm still there. I'm having to re log in on my other screen. <laughs> uh, uh. So there's, oh, there, yeah. Right. Uh, oh, dear. I'm, I'm looking all <laughs> Right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Was um, the fibers so that people can see uh, sort of like how it comes out after the thing is. Yeah. And uh, the it they they really like that molecule as well because it's so long and thin that um you know they can create one long uh synthetic fiber without you know breakage and things like that which is nice, right? Um Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, those, I think, are single strands that are just pulled kind of out of spinneret on a manual run. But you can see the thickness, right? Um, and they, mm. they have the ability to control the thickness of that, those extruded pieces, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's an, I've heard of a new product called graphene. Um, oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, so I wasn't sure where that was going to go. So I yeah. Put it on with this one. Um, I wasn't sure if it related to that or not. But, um, but yeah, these, these, I, 
graphene, graphene, graphene yeah, fibers. Yeah. Graphene, yeah. It's a one atom thick layer of carbon atoms. That's amazing. So like <laughs> instead of that one that we saw where it was all like a diamond, it would just be right. right. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah, so. that's good. So hopefully, you know, graphite, I think, is more of a natural substance. Um, yeah. So that might be um, nice if if maybe we can get away from the, the petroleum products, you know. Exactly. Yeah, if that can be used in a similar way. Yeah. Uh, right. Let me share. Right. So, <laughs> so you can see that you've got here the um, old uh, fire hoses. Yes. And then. Wow. Mm -hmm. So then you can see here on this bag, small maybe, but um, they kind of sort of piece them together like a sort of a oh, uh, hexagon pieces, but they sort of, um, I don't know if there's one or it has it cut out, but they sort of um, cut them out so that they sort of have these um, like off, off of the hexagons, it sort of then kind of comes out. So they sort of slot inside each other. Oh. So then they're not, as far as I'm aware, they don't necessarily, they might sew over it afterwards. But I think that maybe they use more of a glue. Uh, let's um but yeah they um so then they sort of slot in um sort of together mm -hmm. um and yeah and they've like sort of always used um, fire hoses um, wow. so yeah i kind of um i That's like cool. to shout them out sometimes because i just like places that sort of you know like you sort of use these sort of really random yeah to like make something really luxury uh well make anything out of it sort of yeah it's luxury yeah um, yeah but also they started uh back is it just before the pandemic i think um when uh it came out that burberry was like burning a load of their yeah. leather um because then you can write it off do that um <laughs> and yeah literally um and their uh their shareholders found, found out and they were the ones who brought it sort of like made more of a thing about it um which is what we need more of these companies or sort of shareholders that kind of right. care about these things um so then they started i think it was like after that sort of um this elvis and chrissy reached out to them um, but it could have been the Burberry route to them, I, like back the other way, I don't know. But anyway, then they had a, a joint thing, whether it's still going on not now, but oh. they did have a joint thing when Elvis and Chrissy was using this like sort of lever and then making products out of it as well in the same yeah. sort of technique. So then it just like all slotted together. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, I'm glad. So. That's good. Yeah. Oh, the thought of burning leather. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, horrifying. it's horrifying. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, so that that's quite, um, yeah, I just sort of kind of want to show that. Well, and I think it's interesting. End of life. Yeah. It is interesting because you've seen, um, we've seen carbon fiber, um, which is a fabric, 
that has been used um, in a lot of cars and dashboards and things like that, you know, the carbon fiber, um, but it's, it's very brittle. It, it doesn't, it doesn't have a protective quality to it. So, um, you know, Kevlar is just one more thing. I think that they're going to start, I'm hoping that they, they're still researching and trying to find, you know, other ways to use natural products instead of these, um, you know, petroleum based products. Yeah, there'll be someone you know. somewhere at least doing it. So it's yeah. Of, um, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to try and go to the next um, textile fair that there is. Um, but uh, I keep missing, like, when the early tickets go um, on sale, yeah. and then it's like sort of like over £50 pounds to go. And it's sort of when I'm. Oh. Not, yeah, yeah, when I don't sort of make you know sort of like close right. all the time it yeah it becomes sort of like a is that really like where I should be spending my money yeah um, sort of like as a business so um yeah but I yeah I want to I want to try and go um sort of um at least like to this year's one because there must have been like sort of like so many advances because really the last time I went was uh when was it? It was it was twenty um might have been twenty twenty, but like sort of just before um pandemic and mm -hmm. uh either that or it was the end of twenty of twenty nineteen. And that's when all like sort of the um apple skins and things like that was being uh yeah. like, used, like for levers was coming out. Yeah. Um and obviously there's a lot of those sort of fabrics that are really great and sort of innovative but obviously they still have you know they might still be covered like coated in a kind of a plastic yeah but obviously keep it from like rotting straight away but yeah. you know there's a lot of things like that that I'm like that then what can bridge the gap of like yes. fast fashioning away because a lot of what's behind fast fashion is um the sort of throwaway culture right. so it's like you know if you can have something that is aimed at people that are still in that mindset but and then can be literally thrown away you know like like yeah. putting a compost thing at the end of the day um you know it's great but obviously a lot of them fabrics you can't you know they say biodegradable but actually that means it has to go through a chemical process to be broken down um, um yeah yeah so uh you know which probably is a similar thing with sort of like kevlar and that when it's oh, yeah. made in that way it probably needs yeah. to be broken down that way to, to sort of send it back um, yeah it has to actually be it it has to be deconstructed exactly, right yeah. it's so yeah it's so which um fine like but it's sort of then also the chemical process in that of sort yeah. of then what happens to those chemicals yeah uh, so yeah it sort of um yeah kind of goes back to like the bamboo thing of as long as it's like they're used to such a point that then they can not no longer be used and then are um put back into the, the water system in a right. um very careful way then obviously again you know that's fine but yeah like when you're using such sort of uh dangerous chemicals and such you know it's whether that can ever be done in a safe way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting to sort of see if there are, um, yeah, sort of any, any innovation in that kind of um, mm -hmm. field because, yeah, it's sort of like it's only when sort of people start asking questions that these things start yeah. happening. So. Now, I think this shirt is interesting because it's a um, cambray shirt. Oh. Right. Or it looks like it. Right. It looks like a jean, mm. a jean shirt. Right. Yeah. But the hand is very um, tensile, tensely, like very. So this looks like a cambray shirt, looks like denim and denim is cotton. There's not one bit of cotton in this shirt. It's the weirdest wow. thing. So but it does have. Um, Let's see, what does it have? It has something called Lycocell, which oh, I have yeah. no idea what Lycocell is. 
That might be is, linen. Yeah, that is. Um, I think that's like one of the tree cells. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I wondered. Oh my god. Ah, I haven't like I haven't looked into that in like so long, but yeah, because like um, yeah. when I used to work at uh, Monsoon, and they would like come out with all these things, and it would like be like weird sort of um, uh, textile names on like the labels. Yeah. Um, and like and I was, you know, like I'm interested in that, and I like to sort of know, and then like customers would ask. We got no information from like you know our head office or monsoon themselves, and yeah. we like work in the stores. It's like how are you not expecting people to ask? Yeah. And then I tried to like research online, and I couldn't find it. And that was when tent sale was the thing, uh-huh. and you literally like you couldn't even find anything, um, because at the time it was like in under its sort of like trademark thing. Oh. Um, okay. But then yeah. sort of there wasn't much coming out, so it wasn't until. Yeah. I went to a talk uh, by someone and they were part of the company like using it and then they like spoke about it and I was like oh right interesting <laughs> yeah so Linacell is um is like sort of a, a variation of that yeah I think it where. because it, it there's polyester in it too mm. there's a I think there's 10 percent linen Right. And then the remaining, so there's 10% linen and then the rest is this lycocell and polyester. Right. Yeah. So I think it's odd that they're putting in like a synthetic, almost linen substitute with the linen itself. Yeah. Right. And then poly, like it's like yeah, you know, all exactly of them together. Exactly. <laughs> And then, you know, sort of like, even like with that kind of at the end of its life, like taking that apart, you know, like let alone like Kevlar. Yeah. Like, just sort of separating those three fibers is sort yes. of like such a um, arduous process that sort of um, often it's like, oh no, that can't be done. You know, sort of there are companies um, that I've sort of heard about like in the past few years that are. Um, Sort of working more and more to um sort of help with that process oh but um yeah you know like it's can't so be easy other people that are just like oh you know whatever oh. i can't say it it's like oh my yeah. god <sighs> yeah. i have to keep this shirt for a really long time now because i, yeah. <laughs> I looked at what it was made out of <laughs> it literally, i feel literally. bad <laughs> yeah just, just oh. that, uh, oh, well. the polyester thing um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, now that's um, that is uh, yeah, like a really sort of interesting. You know, like I don't think people obviously often don't uh, think about kind of the makeup of the fabric itself, let alone you know sort of like kind of saying oh, it feels like something, or it you know like you look at sort of whatever the most of whatever it's made of is, you don't think about sort of the other bit mm-hmm. and the fact that then it's combined. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just going to bring up this last slide that you had yeah. as well, because this is, um, I think that's such a good one. So this is this one is of those, version. yeah, those are, those are one of those um, spinnerets that I was telling you about. And this is a spinneret that is a melting spinneret. So you can see that there's, you know, probably cold air being jetted up, up around there. And then, so those are just very, very small fibers. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. So those polymers are being aligned and then then just uh, extruded through there. And then down in, you know, in that bottom part, that's where that process begins of the winding around those different gears to get the right tension and um, yeah. and pull, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it does look like, like little showers, <laughs> Maya said. They look like little gnome showers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's crazy, like, um, because sort of like when I kind of see, I we'll have to do uh, one of these literally on this process, like, yeah. get a deep dive on sort of every How part the, of this, because, yeah. yeah, it's like crazy, you know, like you can, it's like, it's like a drop of water is like basically what these fibers are coming out of, you know, exactly. It's just, it's 
oil, you know, it's sort of, it's, um, yeah, it's crazy and they could, yeah, sort of get, get fired from. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is sort of um, goes into like for sort of people watching, um, that's when, like we say, sort of, you know, there must be a an actual um, alternative because you can get fibers from literally anything. You can get fibers yeah. from milk. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so there's um, just if it congeals, like, yeah, it's a fiber. Exactly. <laughs> like a little sort of um, weird sort of offshoot, and we will do silk at one point. But um, as a little insight into it um so you get like silk worms you get silk and um, spiders yes they even they take that gene that creates the silk and have injected it into sheep or goats i'm not sure i think it's sheep though and then they and it comes out through the milk so they oh, no. are milking them and then and then it's coming out with this fiber so then you know and as far as i'm aware like you're then getting sort of two in one so you're getting the milk and then they extract the silk from it as well i could be wrong it could be that like the milk's no good but um, that's cool yeah, from what from what i get i yeah i know it's it's one of them that they they it comes from the milk um yeah so it's like really really interesting that they can literally find that gene and something and it's um, amazing you know like, yeah. because then it sort of helps with um because i think it was a gene from the silk spider in particular yes because obviously it, it weaves it but obviously you know that then goes to saving the um uh silk worms in particular because you know then you're not having to like harm an animal you know yeah. it's coming out through sort of a natural means although like you're sort of like kind of uh like the animals like get sort of like milked by hand in, in a right. way um obviously it was a machine but you know it's sort of like they're still having to go through a process but if it's yeah. like you're not having to harm an animal um by doing yeah. that so yeah, yeah. It's, um, and, like, what? <laughs> well and it's yeah. amazing because in <laughs> in all of the in all of the different you know you can look at fiber you know the different properties of the fibers and, you know, they can rank tests or they can rank Kevlar and they can rank, uh, you know, polyester. But s spider silk is always in that list as well because it's yeah. one of the highest tensile strength um, fibers. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's really interesting that there are these natural things that occur, you know, it just in our in our nature you know, and all of this chemical process is going on to make these aramid fibers and all of this stuff, right? But they're still measuring it based on how well it performs yeah. against this little spider and this little yeah. web, right? You know, it's like, wow, that's crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And, yeah. you know, sort of like anything that comes from nature is, is going to be like the thing to beat, really, because yeah. it's sort of, they're they're withstanding you know sort of the test of time yeah. you know sort of going through different they've, temperatures and they've been the guinea pig for like you know eons right exactly, so exactly. they've adapted yeah 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 so, uh, so i would love to do maybe because silk and kevlar um you know there was they did use layered silk for a while for body armor because silk is very very strong it's it's an amazing fiber so maybe we should do the next one on like either spider silk or or you know whatever you want like mulberry silk or you know whatever you want to yeah, do yeah yeah, yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah maybe we could do um yeah sort of like a, an introduction in silk and then like with our mm -hmm. like with our um uh, cotton yeah. we will then sort of do multiples off of that um yeah maybe sort yeah. of like a one that kind of um what sort of links it um, mm -hmm. to being uh nature's kevlar as such <laughs> yeah. yeah and i bring up the silk because it was you know um back in dueling days 
that that was something that the men would do is they would wear a silk panel oh, like, they were like that with multiple layers of you know like just you know tons of silk all layered together and then sewn and then wear it up to just for bullet protection <laughs> i don't know oh, i don't know if it ever stopped anything but yeah i don't know oh, right. So. I, I just wanted to bring this one up for there as well. Uh, before we narrate, Grandma will get stuck <laughs> from spider webs. <laughs> um, there's also there's, um, a really interesting book that I found when I was going to the V and A the other day um, about nylon. Uh, oh. I can't remember what it's called, and it's actually it's on this uh, the phone that I'm using for a, a camera today. Yeah. Um, so I will um, send you send you um, the photo of that because I felt like that would so like my my other fabric book that I got some of the cotton stuff from. Right. This is like a similar book, but on like sort of nylon. It's like the the downfall yeah. of nylon or something like that. I don't know. Like sort of the what, downfall what of, of Western civilization. Yeah, exactly. It's like, because of nylon. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought that was quite interesting. So uh, yeah, so I might have to sort of uh, source that at some point. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I'll yeah. let you know uh, what that was. Um, but yeah, so definitely, um, silk. Uh, an introduction to silk. I think. Yeah. Um, I will do my research. Um, <laughs> thank you for sending me that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, um, yeah, unless there's anything else you want to say, we can end it up if you want. I think that's I think that that's pretty much it. Um Yeah. If anyone has any questions in the chat, you can pop them out. Thanks, Maya. Um, we will um Jennifer. We will let uh Whitney go and uh, <laughs> uh ease her throat. Um Thank you, Claire. Fabulous. That's all right, no problem. Thank you. I've like missed our cat so much. So Me too. Really, it's good um, to see you again. To be doing them back, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, definitely. So and we'll sort of like sort out next week. Um, it's like to be back to our Wednesdays next week, it's just because I'm going away tomorrow. That we can do that. Um, That's good. Fabulous. And we will hopefully see if one there. Oh, oh, bless her. Bless her. Thank you. I'm so glad. You know what? Um, actually, I met um a client today, and he said that he's uh been like sort of watching some of um our YouTube. I don't know, sort of what of the YouTube, but he like found my YouTube and has been like sort of uh, watching like a few things. And then he came in. He said he was like meeting a celeb. So uh, oh, <laughs> so that's awesome. a bit like <sighs> so yeah. Shout out if he if you ever watches. But um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> just, it was kind of interesting. So it's it's nice to know that people, uh, yeah, are appreciative of, of what we're doing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you can, anyone watching, um, or oh, actually I'll just click off our bank. Um, anyone watching, please um, like, and if you wish to subscribe, oh, thank you. subscribe, or make sure that you are subscribed um yeah like the video and putting in the comments kind of what else you would like us to um mm -hmm. to cover because it's really sort of nice to hear from other people kind of what um yeah like what what you'd like to hear about and then this is whitney's um yeah, i'm like super super excited with everything that's going on um <laughs> that sort of you'll be covering some of the um Leah trial and things like that but you can head over to whitney for um any um court cases that are being uh yeah sort of covered um, and hummingbirds are over there yeah i'm oh, sorry i i have some pictures of hummingbirds too so oh, i did some amazing oh, oh. Oh right, I need to go and Law pick it up and hummingbirds. I those, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and uh yeah, sort of um emphasis on some science of this stuff. Um yeah. that kind of anything that uh sort of catches her eye, do go and check that out. Um and yeah, thank you all for um yeah, watching today. Thank you. Perfect mix.
coming birds in law. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. So um, we will see you all later. Uh, let me end that down there. Bye.